Hello and welcome back. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's good. Yeah. That's an old Southern man thing. If you ask them how they're doing, they say pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Monday Night Live. It is Monday again. Already. So Seems like we just did this last I, it week. It really does. Yeah. And, but also it doesn't because you, you were out of town for a few days. I was. That yes. made my week go very slowly. I had a Same. bad week. <laughs> Same. Same. I was at a, a nice little conference in Fort Worth, Texas, and had a great time, met a lot of great people, and... Um, yeah, I wish that Nisha and Beckett could have went with me, but they could not. And so she had to pretend to miss me the whole week. Yeah, I had to pretend really hard. And then a lot of our chickens got killed, and I got locked out of my Instagram. Yeah. And it's just been a cool little week. You had a lot of drama this yeah, week. Yeah, that's what happens when you leave me. I don't know. The world just falls apart. Am I the only spouse in the world? I just literally don't sleep good unless I'm in bed with Nisha. Is that weird? Yeah. Are other people like that? Oh, I think, I mean, maybe when we get together for 50 years, it won't matter, but. Yeah, I'll be like, kiss. Good night. I'm going Bye. to my bed. Yeah, we're in separate <laughs> bedroom. Maybe one day, but not this day. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you watching from? What city, what state, what country? Tell us where you're from. We love seeing that in the comments so we can say hi to you. Who's who's the watching this right now who's furthest in the world from anyone else watching this? How far away are you? Um, yeah, we don't know what got our chickens. I think it was coyotes. Yeah. I think they spooked them. We have a good fence and a good gate. Yeah. And there's really no evidence of foul play. Get it? Foul play. Oh. Oh, I thought that was good. But, yeah, there there are uh, multiple chickens missing, and there's no evidence. So usually in, in my history, if a fox or – coyote or dog or any bobcat gets a chicken you can tell that a chicken has been got but we just have the case of the disappearing chicken <clears throat> yeah it was stressful and i'm unhappy but yeah so it's gonna be okay we've had a temporary reduction in our egg production but we'll be working on that yeah so tonight we're talking about uh how to get through the holidays when you're keto, because uh, it can be stressful and some of us have triggers and yep. some of us are okay with having a little something and some of us it's like a slippery, slippery slope. Yep. I can't believe Thanksgiving is next week. I know that's crazy, right? I can't believe it. But all these tips and tricks we're going to talk about tonight, they're going to help you to not screw up your way of eating, your diet over the holidays, whether you're low carb, low carb paleo, keto, banting. Uh, ketovore or carnivore. And so these are tricks that we've kind of learned through trial and error through the years of doing this. And then also tricks that we've picked up from, from our friends uh, out there in social media world. You maybe even gave us one of these, these tips or tricks in the past. I don't know. But, and then also um, later in this episode, we're going to be taking your questions. So uh, you can type comments. You guys can chat among yourselves. You can meet new low carb keto carnivore friends in the comments. That's completely fine with us. As always, thank you for the stars on Facebook and thank you for the super chats on uh, YouTube. That that little bit of help helps us to spread this message and to help more people, people that we could never reach without your help. So uh, if you if you can't afford any of that, you can always share this video with someone who needs the information. That helps too. Equally as helpful. Yes, very. Absolutely. Uh, so I think the, very, the first and maybe most important thing to get you through is setting boundaries. Yep. Because <clears throat> if you just don't even have a talk with yourself and you just go in there and you're not prepared, you're more likely to fall off the wagon yep. and slide down the hill yep. and into the ocean and 100%. get sucked down into the black hole. The abyss yeah. of <laughs> carbohydrates. Yeah. Excuse and me. so what you don't want to do, first and foremost, is go into the holiday season like this. La, 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 like I lived the first half of my life. Uh, you want to say, okay, the holidays are coming up. I'm doing I'm, I have changed my way of eating because it, this this is going to improve my health and make me look better in that bikini. 
And so you need to think, okay, I've got that thing. Mom always has dinner. And then I've got the church thing I got to go to. And you need to think ahead. What, what all am I expected to attend? And then are you having a function at your house for the holidays? Are you going to a party? Because there are strategies you can implement right before those events that will really help you not completely screw up your way of eating. Yeah. But when I say boundaries, you need to realize that my boundaries – <coughs> and his boundaries and your boundaries, like we're all going to have different boundaries. So 100%. for let's just hypothetically, let's say I allow myself to have a cookie or, or just whatever. And I can snap right back and go back to eating the very next day, fast for 18 hours and be right back into ketosis. Yep. He, on the other hand, yeah. if he had a cookie, it yeah. would just be another cookie and yeah. another cookie. I would gain and another cookie. Two, yeah, I would gain. I would gain two or three pounds, and my ankles would be swollen, and my joints would hurt for days. And yeah. so, yeah, you and and then also you have to know yourself. Are you the kind of person that can eat one cookie and that's literally it, and it doesn't call up your past carbohydrate addiction? It doesn't cause you to binge for the <laughs> next month. Uh, if you're that person, then fine, have that cookie because it is a celebration. It's the festival season. But if you know if you're like me and you know that one cookie leads to rehab, <laughs> carb rehab, carb rehab, yeah. then just don't eat the cookie. Yeah, be very self aware. Know yourself. Know your triggers, and know that some and some of us cannot go down that road of sweets because it's yeah. like I'll just have one and I'll just have for today, and then before you know it, it's May. And you've been eating like crap since Thanksgiving. So. Yeah. so we'll break it down. We'll talk about things you can do before the dinner or the breakfast or, or whatever, the, the party. Gathering, thing. if you're having a gathering. Yeah, things you can do at the gathering. We'll call it the celebration. So it mm -hmm. kind of meets all the criteria. And then what you can do after. In case you do flub up or in case you don't. Uh, let's just do it that way. How about that? Yeah. So I think uh, a really easy way to get out of the cookie, uh, what would we call it? Trap. Cookie the trap. cookie trap Ooh. or the sweet trap, whatever, is to bring your own sweet stuff. So uh, there are so many good keto sweet recipes. 100%, yeah. um, our friend Melissa on her blog, cookingketowithfaith.com, yep. uh, Kim Howerton, theketonist.com, yep. Maria Emmerich. Yep. Like, there are so many alternatives. Bring a dish. Yep. Bring two or three if you want to. Yep. Also, Carrie Brown has a ton Carrie, of recipes yeah. in all her books. But then, so first of all, make and bring your own keto friendly dish. Mm -hmm. And then don't tell anyone at the party that that's keto because what I mean, what we're ultimately trying to do here is improve the health of the world. I definitely want to improve your health, but I want to improve everybody's health. And so when you bring that keto tiramisu like Kim Howerton makes that is divine. When you make the ice cream like Carrie Brown makes, when you make the delicious desserts like Maria Emmerich has in her recipe books, and you take that, then you, you've got your built-in dessert. There you go. You know you love it, and, and you can eat that, and it's not going to completely screw up your, your diets. But also, your mother-in-law will have a bite because you didn't walk in the door and say, this is keto. Because then everybody who's not keto is going to be like, oh, well, your mother-in-law is probably going to be like, is that keto? And maybe, <laughs> depending on the type of mother-in-law she is. But there'll like, be it's two, delicious. It's what it is. It's okay. delicious. That's Thanks. right. Yeah, and but there'll be two or three people who try your dessert and be like, dang, that's good. I want the recipe, and you can be like, it's keto. I'll <laughs> give it to you later. Yeah. So that's a really good way. Is just to have an out for yourself that you know you love, definitely, and you know that it's going to be easy for you to grab that instead of the other thing. Yeah. Another thing that really helps me a lot before a big event is to eat before I go. If I know that there's going to be all tons of, of just scrumptious, tempting, non-keto stuff there, I'll eat. I'll eat a, I'll eat a ribeye or I'll eat two pounds of hamburger. I'll eat eggs and, and butter. I'll be completely full before I go to that event. And for some, uh, for some of you, you may think, well, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Because you're gonna, you're not gonna want to eat. Well, you you will. You might still eat some, but you're not gonna be as tempted because you're not gonna have the temptation. Plus, you're also really, really hungry. Yeah, I don't 
recommend fasting before you go to one of these Don't do that. Uh, we'll get to that get togethers because you, when you break your fast, you're going to be like, I want, I want all the things, all yep. the things. Yep. 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 I mean, it, fasting and exercising and all that before the event is literally, literally a setup for complete failure. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Now, I mean, there, there might be some of you that can do that, but for yeah. the whole, yeah. it's better to just yeah. probably not do that. Exactly. And <laughs> what else would you do before the event, before the celebration? Oh, mm -hmm. let's see. I would probably ask who, like whoever is hosting, just to ask them what's going to be there. You know, because then you can prepare yourself to be around that mm -hmm. stuff and True. kind of mm -hmm. build up <clears throat> your self-motivation and be like, you know, that's not going to taste as good as I thought it was going to taste. I'm going to feel bad afterwards. And we're we're not doing that this year. Yeah. Remember if you did that last year, how you felt? Remember that because I know some of us did. Yep. Remember that and yep. remember that feeling of, yep. ugh, gross. I don't yep. feel good. It wasn't worth it. I'm having, all, I'm having inflammation. Now I'm having pain or whatever it is that happens when you eat sugar. Diarrhea. Yeah. You don't. That's a really good reason not to eat off plan because you yeah. don't want to be the person in the bathroom. <clears throat> yeah. Thinking it up. And visit visualization before any event, a sporting event or an event like this is a great way. And so literally picture in your mind how you're going to feel if you do stray over towards the dessert table. How are you going to feel that next morning? Are you going to sleep good that night? No. Are you going to feel like crap the next morning and maybe the next several days? Yep. So play that out in your head and 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 come to a firm conclusion. You don't want to feel that way. It's not going to be worth it. It doesn't make the celebration any better. Are you done? I'm done. Okay, because I don't want to forget this. This is very important. The holidays. Do you know what happens during the holidays? Um, presents. Yeah. But you know what else? What? People do a lot of drinking. I was just about to bring that Were up. you? Yes, I was. I was, I was. And so if you don't know if there's going to be alcohol, maybe ask the host or hostess, is there going to be alcohol? And if there is, and, and they're like, oh, yes, we always have margaritas and Cosmos at our, at our get-togethers. Well, neither of those is in any way, shape, or form keto. Or low carb. Or low carb. And so what you're going to do is you're going to bring your own drink and bring it as a gift. Like, oh, I brought this this gin or this this vodka or this uh, whatever, this Dry Farms wine, and, and I'm going to share with everybody. Uh, and, and that way you've got your built-in low-carb keto-ish. We don't really like to alcohol. call it keto-ish. It's low carb. Yeah, you, yeah, no yeah. alcohol is keto because it, it kicks you out of ketosis. That's exactly okay? right. And, but, you know, and is alcohol healthy? No. Yeah, but, but it's a once a year celebration. You know, so whatever. I'm not judging anyone. I drink dry farm wine. Okay. And so there's several different ways you can do this. You can bring your own drinks, like he said, which is always nice because then there's what you want there. And uh, Zevia or is it Zevia? I don't know. Z E V I A. Is that the new potato potato? You Zevia, know, I don't Zevia. know. Stevia, Stevia, Zevia, Zevia, whatever. They make mixed cocktails that are sweetened with Stevia. And so you can order those on, I think they're on Amazon, and they have all kinds of different flavors. You can do that, or you can go get the flavored um, stuff at Walmart over in the water section. Yep. They have Cosmo, Margarita, stuff Sugar like that. Sugar-free seltzer. You can bring dry farm wines, Seco wine, um, and you can always just do a gin and soda water with a lime, vodka and soda water with a lime. There's tons of low-carb options that are going to be you know, safer yes. for you uh, in the way that like you're not going to get sick to your stomach Yeah. because sugar and alcohol together, it's going to be bad. If you've been yeah. strict keto for a while, it's not going to go well. Yeah. First of all, the alcohol is going to have a much bigger effect yeah. on you than it normally would. And also if you mix the alcohol with sugar, you, like Nisha said, you are not even next door to ketosis anymore. You're way down the street yeah. and it'll take a minute for you to get back in there. So really think it, you got to think ahead if you're going to do this and do it successfully. It is absolutely possible for you to come out on the other side of this holiday season, one or two pounds lighter than you are right now. And you may think, well, that's crazy. That's, that's not, there's no way. So I was at this conference in, in Fort Worth 
and they they fed us very well. And it was three meals a day. And there was a full smorgasbord all the way from keto all the way over to the dessert table. And I came back home. I, I had I had not gained a pound. And I, I normally don't eat three meals a day, but, you know, I was trying to be cordial and, and be, you know, part of Plus the, it. was good food. It was really, really yeah. good food. And I came back at the same weight that I left. And you can do that through this holiday season, whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not, where you're at, Christmas definitely is coming. You can come out on, on January the 1st, actually weighing a pound or two less than you do right now, if you make a plan and stick to the plan. Also drink a lot of electrolytes if you're going to partake in alcohol yep. that night, because when you're in social areas, you tend to drink more than you think you're going to drink and you're not paying attention to how much you drink. You really need to drink a cocktail and a glass of water with electrolytes and maybe yep. even pregame with electrolytes as yep. well, just Absolutely. to help you. Or you can do what I do and actually put the mineral drops in your, in your drink and just make that part of your mixed drink. Uh, the mineral drops are a little salty. But I've actually found that that enhances the flavor of like gin and soda with a lime. You put a little splash of mineral drops in there. That's got all the electrolytes and all the other minerals you need. That's going to go a long way towards preventing any kind of hangover in case you have more than one. It's going to keep your electrolytes up and optimal. And uh, that's that's definitely a win-win. Always hydrate. Hydrate. Yes. It's yeah. important when you're drinking alcohol. Yes. 100%. Got to flush it out of your system. Yes. So now we're at the event. Yeah. What are our strategies at the Sorry, event? I gotta adjust here. Okay. Uh, okay, so don't talk about it. Right. We're back. Hi. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're at the event. All right. So the food is spread out as far as the eye can see. Mixed drinks everywhere. Cosmos, Mai Tais, right? Mai Margaritas. Tais. They're everywhere. I don't think anybody has Mai Tais in the way. Right, somebody has Mai Tais and they've just been offended that you said nobody has Mai Tais. Oh, I'm not judging them, but I just don't think it's so popular. <laughs> so anyway, so I think the easiest way to get through the holidays is not talking about what you can't have. 100%. Just act like it's a normal day and that you can eat what you want because you can eat what you want. Yeah. You it's can just eat what you want isn't the norm right. anymore. And, and that's yep. fine. And you can eat as much as you want of what you should eat. Yes. Think about that. The other people, if they're doing a calorie restriction or Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or any of that, they're going to be like, well, I can have some pie, but I can only have one bite of pie and one chip off a chocolate chip cookie and only three, you know, you don't have to do that. You can sit down and eat literally as much meat as you want to eat and you're going to be fine. And that's one of my major strategies when, when we go to an event is the, my first, uh, if you, do you make more than one trip through the line? Cause I always do. My first trip through the line is nothing but fatty meat. And so it could, I don't care if I want it to be beef, but if it's not, it can be chicken, pork, goat, lamb, possum. I don't care, but I'm going to eat all the meat on my first pass through. That way I know I'm filling up on fat and protein as much as I possibly can. And what are the two macronutrients that turn all off your hunger hormones and turn on your satiety hormones? Fat and protein. And so before I know it, I'm going to have lots of delicious meat and I'm going to be starting to get really, really full. And that makes it much less tempting to go further down that table down to where the sweet stuff starts to appear. Yeah. Um, but if you're lucky and you got Anisha, you're going to get to have keto dressing. Yes. And then you get to enjoy <clears throat> that at Thanksgiving, which I'm really excited about. Recipes up on my blog, Nisha Loves It dot yeah. blog. Go and check it out. If we took Nisha's keto dressing, to a, to a function, to an event, and everybody tried some, there would be people that came up to her and, and they would say, are you not doing keto anymore? Because you brought that dressing. 
And then she would get to say, well, actually, that's that's keto friendly, very keto friendly dressing, very low carb. I made it last year for our when we had a lot of people last year, uh, including Granny Berry and many non keto people. Yeah. And nobody even know. Nobody noticed. knew that it was keto. Yeah. They just loved it. It's freaking yeah, delicious. They, they ate it like it was because it looks like dressing. Tastes, it like, tastes dressing. like dressing. So good. Must be regular dressing. Yeah, not dry, very moist. Well, where's that recipe? On my blog. On your blog. Yes. Okay, perfect. It's blog. on YouTube as well, but go to the blog because the yeah. recipe's written out. Yep. And that's probably what you're going to go by. So if you need some recipe ideas for this kind of thing to take with you, if it's bring a dish or add a dish, then check out Nisha's blog. Check out Nisha's YouTube channel. Check out our good friend Melissa's uh, blog, cookingketowithfaith.com. Yes. And then Maria Emmerich's books, Carrie Brown's books, Kim Howerton's uh, Facebook There's page. There's just so many keto There's books just, yeah. now. And, There's no excuse. Yeah. And, the, you know, when people were first starting to try the keto recipe, some of them were kind of janky. They weren't that great. Well, people were st still figuring out how to do things. Right. But you know? now... Nisha and all these other people I talked about, their recipes are on point. Now, I'm not a professional recipe writer. I'm no. just telling you what I do. Like, I'm not, I'm not as cool uh, as these other it's people. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean. Like, I, I don't, Kim knows right. so much. It's like science. Yes. The way she writes recipes, yep. it's like science. It is science. Yeah. She's very sciencey. You want to, okay. Do you have anything else? You want to take some questions? Well, let's see. What else will we do at the event? Um, and I mean, there, there's any number of other strategies, but I think those are, those are the main ones. Those are the main ones. Now let's talk about, cause you know, one or two of us, what if you mess up, you're going to be like, I was just going to have a bite of it, but damn it. Right. Okay. So now what do you need to do to get back on the wagon, back in ketosis and act like this, this thing that you did never happened. What's, what, what would you recommend? Uh, Shut up. Don't beat yourself up. Right. Don't get on that guilt train. Does it guilt goes help at all? Nowhere. It doesn't help. No. That's the train to nope. nowhere is guilt. That's and right. don't you, you just don't get on it. Okay. Nope. And just wake up and do your keto thing again. Don't yep. worry about it. Fast yep. if you can fast. That's what I would do. The next day, if I really screwed up, I would just fast that entire 24 hour period the next day. And then I, I would fast up to whenever you normally break your fast during the day, whether that's breakfast or lunch or, or later. But that fast, there's nothing quicker in the world to get you into ketosis than fasting. And so if you screw, if you screw the pooch at the party or the, the dinner, just fast until the fast for 24 solid hours. And that's going to get you almost back into ketosis or back into ketosis. You may still feel like yuck for two or three more days. But you know you're already back in ketosis and you're and you're healing the damage that you did. It's like you fell down and skinned your knees. You don't beat yourself up about that and you know slap yourself around. You just treat the wound and you move on with your life. And that's exactly how you should think of it. If you fall off the wagon at a holiday party, yeah, because it's it's not the end of the world. The yeah. world keeps turning, things keep going, yep. and you can too. Just keep going. Huh? Keep swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> Dory! Sorry. Okay. Uh, screw the pooch. Did you say that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is that oh, Kenny. Should I not say that? Lordy. I mean, you didn't, you know, really. <clears throat> just a figure of speech. Okay, okay. I am 34. There's like several people who are asking if I'm 20. She looks 20, doesn't she? Thank you. I know, right? Thank you. I'll be 35 in February. Thank you very much. I am so excited. I am so excited. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, do you want to talk about the sleepy thing with the turkey? Yeah. Let now. Now's the time to type your question. I, I, if I had, didn't say that, now's the time because we're going to start taking questions. So if you already typed it in, type it again. And that way we'll be, have a chance at seeing your question. So a lot of people think that the tryptophan in Turkey, because there's been million, a million articles so written many. about this. So, so many, many. so many uh, evening news programs like, you know, if you eat too much turkey and you get drowsy, that's not what puts you on the couch, people. It's not the tryptophan in Turkey. Actually, beef and chicken and goat and lamb and pork, they all have tryptophan too. It's not that. It's the carbs. If you eat too many carbs, even keto friendly carbs, you're going to be like, oh, I just need to lay down. I'm so tired. Yeah, that's that's not tryptophan doing that. 
Sorry. It's the shag. Or... Yeah, it's the carbs. Yeah, isn't there so many things with way more tryptophan than turkey? Oh yeah, there's a long like a list of list. yeah other meats that just are sky high in tryptophan, and so a ribeye doesn't make you sleepy, nor does turkey. But if it does, who cares? Unless it's got five pounds of stuffing stuck up its butt, and you ate all the stuffing, then you're gonna get sleepy. But it's not from the turkey. Yeah. What else? All right, all right, all right. Uh, oh, oh. Kim has a recipe for mashed potatoes using cauliflower. Now I know, I know, I know. Cauliflower. Tastes like cauliflower. This is legit and it looks straight up like cream potatoes. She uses science. I don't, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a Thanksgiving miracle. So look that recipe up. I think it may be in the holiday cookbook that we did last year. You can find it on the katonis.com. You can download it. That's got um my grandma's chocolate pie recipe in it. It's got, I'm pretty sure her cream potatoes in it. Potatoes. Um, so, so many recipes over there. So if you're interested in that, I'm pretty sure it's on theketonist.com. Did you post a new recipe today? Uh, no, not yet. Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's see here. Oh, we have some good questions tonight. Oh, I just I just talked about that. Okay, well, next one. This this is not pertaining to Thanksgiving. This is a good one, Lady Jane. Doctor Barry, did your skin break out when you were pre-diabetic? Yeah, I had terrible skin. Um, <clears throat> I was in my early thirties when I was developing pre-diabetes, and I still I had acne. I had cysts and boils. I had uh, dry, scaly elbows. My, I had a really significant rosacea and uh, had dandruff. Oh, my God, dandruff, dandruff for days. And I, like, I literally kept the, the Head & Shoulders company in business with dandruff, trying to get the dandruff to go away. And, yeah, my skin cleared up significantly with keto and, and tightened up significantly. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with how my skin is on, on a very, very low carbohydrate diet. Dr. Berry, how do you prefer to cook your steak? I like it rare. That's my favorite way. I can eat medium rare. I can really rare. He likes it yeah, really rare. I can tolerate medium tolerate, but rare. I mean, very rare. That's, that's the way I really love it. The more you cook a steak, the, the more you break down the nutrition that it contains and you don't want to do that. Okay. I really want to see a before and after from Dr. Barry. We've got a few out there. Where did yeah. you post? You posted one. I'll post another one. Yeah. You'll post another one? Yeah, okay. I'll post yeah. another one. I'll post it on my YouTube feed, uh, community feed, and then I'll post it on my Facebook as well. It's from when Abby Grace was, what was she, six? Six, or, yeah, yeah. Six or seven. And he's, you can tell he's <laughs> sucking it in. I'm in a, I'm in a button up shirt yeah. and I'm, on one knee with Abby when she was little. And now I mean, standing up. Oh, I was standing up. Yeah. And I'm trying. I mean, I, and I'm not trying to suck in. I'm sucking in like for his all. His head is even like tilted Yeah, I'm back. like. His head's sucked in too. Yeah, I'm trying to really suck it in, but it's it's a fail. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fail. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Rena wants to know, is butternut squash a good alternative for sweet potatoes? Butternut squash is, is a little less bad. It's not quite as carby as potatoes. Uh, and sweet potatoes are a little less bad than Irish potatoes or white or yellow potatoes. But remember, less bad does not equal good. So butternut squash are paleo, and they're relatively low carb. But most people on a keto uh, way of eating, that's too many carbs. Pumpkin is actually pretty low carb. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the squash, uh, pumpkins actually are a, yeah. a type of squash. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can feed the squash to your pumpkins. I mean, feed the, wow, that one didn't make any sense. <laughs> you can feed the pumpkins to your chickens and then eat the chickens and the eggs, but don't, don't eat the pumpkins. Uh, it, it's just too carby for most people. Oh, that, that's I, funny. I said that. That was good. That yeah. is so funny. You can oh, feed the squash God. to the pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I'm clearing my throat because I have drainage. Yeah. Yay me. The weather in Tennessee, if you if you don't live here, it's 80, it's 40, it's 60, it's 30. And, and that really messes me up. But the thing is, I would have lost my voice yeah. 
It's so much milder now. Before yeah. I was yeah. meat heavy. Yeah. And now it's just like a little annoying yeah. thing. My throat isn't sore. I don't yeah. have a stuffed up nose. It's just like a little thing. Yeah. Before she was keto, so she, much was, better. She, she would hark up loogies like that any truck driver would be proud of. Thanks. I'm telling you. Yeah. That's cute. Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what about yellow squash? Yeah. So um, the color of squash doesn't really make any difference. It's just different colors of squash. You, you can always uh, look up the different carb counts mm -hmm. for these veggies. And they do change a little bit, but uh, all squash have relatively the same carb count. Uh, it's just like saying, oh, I'm not going to eat white rice anymore. I'm going to eat brown rice. It's, just, it's not any better. So, um, Jennifer, what do you think of allulose? I tasted it for the first time today. You know, when it first came out, we were pretty skeptical because it ends in os and it's somehow actually from sugar. And I, But I will say it is a really good sweetener to cook with. Yeah. But we don't eat a lot of sweetener on the daily. So I, a lot of people love it. It seems to work fine for yeah. a lot of people. So I think if that's that's one that you like. Multiple people have reached out and said that their blood sugar didn't, you know, they've got yeah. a CGM and it didn't affect their blood sugar at all. Oh, KC says, I like how Dr. Berry is down to earth. Hey, Emily, how you doing? Linda, do you cook uh, venison, heart, liver, and lungs? Uh, we have used heart and liver. So far, yeah. We haven't done lungs. No, but... Uh, when we start doing some hunting later, later in this coming year, we're going to start doing some hunting. And uh, currently all we can get Nisha's dad, Pedro, to say for us is the liver and the heart. He, he freaks out at any other uh, re requests. And we're not there when he's yeah. cutting it open, so we can't just be like, move. <laughs> right. You know, but you know what has occurred to us in the past week? <clears throat> Somebody, did they email you or Instagram you? We've been throwing away the bones yeah. of the deer. Yeah. And somebody was like, it's some of the richest bone marrow I've ever had. So we're going to start. We got to figure out how to do it right. Yeah. Getting the bones for the bone marrow. The bones too. Yeah. yeah. And make bone broth for days. Big old thick femur. Did mm. they have femurs? Is it they, called the they, same thing? They do have femurs. They do. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. What about the thymus? Do you guys eat the thymus? We haven't tried that. We have not. And we're eventually going to eat every organ. Um, maybe not, you know, regularly, but we're going to have tried every organ. And uh, the thymus is definitely one that, that I think is probably has some very good nutritional benefits for human beings to eat. But we have not yet tried that. I try any. That's so I, we, we've eaten liver and heart routinely. Chicken heart, venison heart. What other hearts have we had? I think we have beef heart somewhere. Uh, pig? Pig, beef hearts are humongous, my goodness. But uh, I tried to cook a, 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 a beef kidney and it was, it smelled like, mm -mm. It, I, I don't know. Maybe you did I did it wrong. Yeah, I, think. I probably did it wrong, but it was, mm -mm, no. So I've got to learn about cooking the organs. I've actually bought a couple of old cookbooks back from the 1800s because they had, they ate organs every day. It was just standard. To, to eat organs. And I'm looking at some of those recipes, trying to figure out um, how to cook them right. Diane says, do you guys ever fall off the wagon? When's we did in the beginning you fell off the a wagon? lot. Um, quarantine. When, quarantine when for, it first So did. like March. Yeah. I made a video of it <clears> too. <throat> I was very honest. <laughs> yeah. I ate some bad stuff. <clears throat> but I, uh, you know, I sucked it up, got back on it and, and, uh, yeah. And you actually are on. thinner now. I'm about the same way. I didn't really gain weight. I yeah. just, I, I felt awful. Yeah. And had an awful attitude we, too. I did not. We all did. We were locked up in quarantine. We she did. So I also <laughs> fell off the weight at the beginning of quarantine. But when I, when I say that, what I, I was, I was carnivore. No, I did. Remember I was carnivore and I, I kind of, I backtracked to keto for a while. That's not. I know, I know. But for me, that, that is a little bit, that's at least hanging a leg off the wagon. Everybody's I, rolling their eyes. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest here. I gained a few pounds and uh, not much, you know, two or three. 
and, and started to get the belly bloat from eating all the veg and started to get hold a little fluid around my ankles. And I'm like, Oh, I, I can't do this. This, this is awful. And so I tightened it back up to carnivore and it all just went right back to normal. That's why we keep saying it. But I know when it happens to you, when you fall off the wagon, you're like, Holy crap. I really screwed up. I don't know what to do. Literally fast for the rest of that day and the next day, and then just restart your ketogenic way of eating. That is, there is no magic, there is no secret. Just that's it. That's it. You don't beat yourself up. Negative emotions are not going to help it at all. They're actually going to increase your risk of of going on a binge. Is what that's going to do. So do not have that negative self talk. Just say, okay, you screwed up, dummy. That's fine. We're fasting tomorrow, and then we're back on keto the next day. The end. And then you're not going to discuss it with yourself anymore. Are you hot? You are. I'm hot. You're cute. Uh, that is like one of the most common questions I get asked. I don't know about you. How do I start back on keto? Just just do it. If you mess up really bad, just fast for the next day. Then the next day after that, go right back to your usual keto schedule. That's it. That, that literally is the entirety of the secret. Yeah. There is no secret. There's no secret. Yeah. yeah. Lady Jane. I can't. It's the second time I picked her. I didn't even... Do that on purpose. But uh, it's a good question. Dr. Barry, how much weight have you lost in total since keto? Back when I was a fat, ignorant doctor, I weighed 297 pounds. And this morning I weighed 230. So And you're six, six foot three. In the morning. Oh, yeah. I'm six four in the morning until Nisha wears me down an inch over the day. But so I've lost, what, 67 pounds. And you've lost a pretty good little chunk. I lost 55. 55 yeah. pounds. And I lost... So I lost 50 before I got pregnant, and then I gained, like, every single pound of that back while I got pregnant. This is who needs to do it before and after, and because her before, it. it looks like it's been Photoshopped. It does. It looks like a completely different That's person. Like, is that your cousin or somebody? I had a, I left, gained so much weight in my face. I was, I had a moon face. Yeah, it's very round, but it was still cute, but yeah. very round. I'm 5'2", by the way. And it's so odd, because I don't have a memory of her looking that way. Like she just always looked the same to me. But then when I look at those pictures, I'm like, <laughs> what the crap? I do not remember you looking like that. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. I must have really loved you back then. I don't know. Very funny. I was still cute. Oh, I know. Married you, didn't I? Oh, oh, shoot. That's not the one I meant to. Charlene wants to know how to get rid of diarrhea when you're carnivore. Some people will have a few days or even a few weeks of diarrhea when, when they're converting to a carnivore diet. What's going on is, is your carbohydrate loving bacteria are basically throwing a tantrum and your meat loving bacteria haven't really had a chance to upregulate into the numbers you need to have just a stable microbiome. It's not dangerous. It, it's not in any way negative. It, I mean, it sucks to have diarrhea for a few days, but that's temporary. It's going to go away. Um, some people find that taking a very good quality probiotic helps that other people find that it doesn't help that at all, but either way, it's going to go away in a few days or a week or two, just stick with it and you'll, you'll see. Rebecca says, can a person who was born overweight and stayed overweight throughout their life get truly and healthfully skinny as an adult? Yeah. So, and that's an excellent question. If you had asked me this question, Rebecca, Back in 2003, 2004, I would have said, no, no. I mean, you can lose some weight. You can definitely, I mean, that'll be healthier, but you're never going to look like this little skinny waif. And based on your body composition and your bone size and your mus musculature, you may not ever be able to look like a runway model, and that's okay. Uh, but I, we've seen some people who were very, very large. Our good friend, Kelly Hogan, uh, at my zero carb life, she weighed 260 pounds. Yeah, she she lost and a she's whole person. Five eight, and she she's lost I think 120 pounds or something like that. And looking at her now, you would think, well, she should just look like a deflated flat fat person, but she does not look like that at all. Oh, she looks amazing. Yeah, and and so if you're if you're losing weight with calorie restriction, and she does not work out. Right. Yeah, that you gotta remember that. So check her out. It's it's my zero carb life, yeah. I think is she has a YouTube channel, great videos. She's so funny. But people who lose weight properly with a proper human diet and intermittent fasting, 
they don't have the loose skin that people who, who lose weight with Weight Watchers and, and, you know, move more, eat less, semi-starvation, calorie restriction, all that stuff. They're going to have loose skin because they're not eating enough good nutrient-dense food. But we know multiple people who you see them and they look like they've been skinny their whole life. And then they show you their before picture and you're like, holy crap. I can't believe this is the same person. So it, it's definitely doable. Uh, and, and whether you end up with that, that level of success or not, you're still going to be healthy. Hey, be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Do that. So nice. Do that. I have just become a member of the Tennessee Cattlemen's Association. And I'm going to put this on the front of my Dodge truck with pride. We don't have And one cows. of these days I'll have a cow. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. Um, Roxanne wants to know your thoughts on Quest bars and cookies. Yeah, uh, Quest. So if you, you need to read the nutrition label. The ingredients. Read the ingredients and read not the net carbs because that's what they try to point you towards. You need to read the total carbs. Most of the Quest bars I've looked at, they'll call them protein bars, but they're actually carbohydrate bars because they have more total carbohydrates than <clears throat> they do total protein. Uh, I don't ever eat them. And it's not just Quest. It's basically virtually any protein bar, any energy bar, any of that stuff. It's just a carbohydrate bar. And when you look at the total carbohydrate count, then you're like, oh, okay. Okay. With that being said, though. Yes. This time of year. Yep. That's a good alternative exactly. if you yep. need a cookie. That's okay. A but honestly, compromise. I don't really like Quest cookies. I like high key. Uh, High key cookies and fat snacks. Yes. Those are the two <clears throat> that I prefer. And I've tried a lot of them because at KetoCon, I like tried yep. everything. Both of those are really good. They're really, really good cookies. And um, if you unwrap them, because they're all individually wrapped, unwrap them, put them on a platter. They just look like chocolate chip cookies. And they have tons of flavors. They have lemon, chocolate chip, brownie, double chocolate, like there's tons of flavors. So I would go with those instead of the Quest Bars. The ingredients on the Quest Bars aren't really that great. So. Brett Butler wanted to say hi. Hi, RB. What's so cute? He used he, to be on every video. Now he just goes and takes them out. He's like, whatever, I'm done. Uh, okay, we'll see. What else you got? Oh, shoot. Give me your best question. They're going so fast. Oh, here's a Michelle says, hi, do you recommend, uh, what do you recommend for ketovore eating after a row and Y gastric bypass surgery as too much fat can cause digestive issues? Yeah. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to understand is that high fat foods may temporarily cause GI issues. And that's the, we've had so many people who've had Rowan Y and other bariatric procedures done, had their gallbladder taken out. And they were told literally by their doctor, by their surgeon, you can't ever eat lots of fat or you will have uh, digestive issues. We found in hundreds and hundreds of keto friends who've had Rowan Y and other bariatric uh, surgeries and their gallbladder out that, yeah, they do have those, those tummy concerns for the first week or two or three of ketovore or keto or, or carnivore. But after a few weeks, those issues just go away. If you keep having, and it's usually diarrhea if you eat too much fat. Uh, if you keep having that, then I always recommend, uh, first of all, give it three weeks. If it's still there, then try buying an ox bile supplement off of uh, Amazon. Get one with lots of five-star reviews and try that. And, and and a lot of people notice that that helps for a while. But even those people eventually come back and say, you know, I, I took that for a few months, but now I don't and I have no problems at all. So, Michelle, your your GI tummy issues are not permanent. They're, your body's going to adapt to this diet and they will get better. Um, also, I want to say to the cookie thing, those are they're a little pricey. Yeah. And you can make your own keto cookies. Yeah. Like there's tons of recipes. And we highly recommend you make your own everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know exactly what's going in it. Yep. And, you know, we don't eat this stuff all year. This is literally two days, five days yep. in, in, in uh, November and December. And then it's back to the meat, eggs, butter. Yep. That's it. 
Yeah. They, 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 but like, you want to enjoy the holidays? Enjoy them with a good alternative. Exactly. Don't fall off the wagon because exactly. you feel like <clears throat> there's not a good alternative. Yeah. There are so many. If the holiday celebrations, if that's currently all about the food and alcohol for you, you might want to just do a little self-assessment and a reassessment because it's supposed to be about family and friends. That's what that's what it is supposed to be about. The food is supposed to be, uh, oh, also there's food. The food should not be your primary joy at these events. It should be the conversation, meeting new people, uh, reconnecting with people you've known in the past. That should be your primary joy and entertainment at these events, not the dessert table. Oh, hello there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Come to me. <laughs> da -da -da. The amazing Becky Berry. He doesn't have pants on. What's new? No, no, mommy. You stay with daddy. He has his name on the back of his shirt. It's so cute. Look, he says Beckett, number one. For his first birthday. So cool. Ah. What? Mom, can you say hi? Say, say hi, hi, baby. Everybody. Say hi. Hello. See hi, that Mom. baby. Look at that baby. What you doing? He's so cute. Okay. What trick is he going to do for us tonight? I don't know. Probably pull my shirt up. <laughs> That's my boy. Uh, <clears throat> one more time, you can find my dressing recipe on YouTube and my blog. Go to the blog. The video is embedded in the blog, so you can watch the video over there. <laughs> Misha loves it. Dog blog. Yes, we've got links to all of our stuff on other social media down in the show note. What down here on YouTube, up there on Facebook, right? Uh, and so if you want to check out the mineral drops or you want to check out the, uh, the freeze dried liver capsules, all those things are in the, in the show notes. You can check them out on my YouTube channel. I just posted a video today called the five enemies of weight loss. And so if you're having some trouble with weight loss, that video might help you a lot because I talk about the five enemies of weight loss. Becky, Boo, what are you, you doing? Going? Where are you he going? Wants, he wants some um, booby. <laughs> what are you doing down there, Beckett? Huh? What are you doing? No. Oh, no. Mommy gave him something to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Nature Berry, you want to no. share? <clears throat> I'm still doing what I eat in a day vlog. So if you want to see what Dr. Berry and I and baby Beckett eat in a day, I post those at least three times a month. So go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh -oh. oh, oh, yeah. This is important. I hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube and I'm doing a giveaway. So if you're not subscribed, go over there, watch the 50K giveaway video, follow the instructions, and uh, I'm giving away a box of meat. And I'll announce the winner on Black Friday. So watch out for that. Oh, the PhD course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me throw this baby while you tell him. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> So if you didn't get to attend the PhD virtual summit when it was live, you can now go purchase the replay and it has all of the speakers and everything and you can watch them at your leisure. <laughs> the link is in the description, but it's phdvirtualsummit.com and you can go buy it over there and you know, watch them, share them with a friend. We don't care. <laughs> Sorry, we got carried away. Oh gosh, these kids over here. We got carried away. Didn't Both we? of them. No. I think that's it. That's, that's the important it. stuff. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. If you think this, the information in this video might help a friend or a loved one stay on their keto way of eating, please share this video with them. Uh, as always, thanks so much for the stars and the super chats and the super stickers. That means the world to us. Uh, it means the world when you share this video as well. If you did not get enough of us tonight, we will be live again tomorrow night in our private Facebook group. You get into that group by becoming a Facebook supporter or by becoming a patron on patreon.com. Uh, it's down in the show notes on YouTube, up in the show notes on Facebook. Yeah, join us if you can. And if you can't, that's okay because we'll see you next Monday night. Same place, same time. Ain't that right, Betty? No. <laughs> Say bye-bye. That, that means yes, Daddy.
Good job. Blown focus. Kiss. Good uh, job. Such a good baby. That's right. All right, guys. See thanks you next so much. Week.